I was saying that mathematic morphology <coughs> goes back uh, to Mataron and Serra, and Mataron really strongly influenced two fields. Uh, the one in his area is called geostatistics, uh, but being a deep uh, mathematical approach, it's been invented many times over. So it's called geostatistics or Kriging or also Gaussian processes in the machine learning community. And the other thing he did was uh, lay the foundations of mathematical morphology. And there is uh, this institute affiliated with the Ecole des Mines uh, in Fontainebleau, where his successors are still working on, on two floors on uh, the continuation of these two fundamental lines of work. Now, the basic morphological operations are dilation and erosion, and there is beautiful mathematical uh, background to all of that, but the image on the right-hand side really already says a lot about it. So you have some original image here shown in blue, and you have a structuring element here shown in black, and a dilation means that you can uh, put your structuring element anywhere on the blue shape, and the union of all the uh, resulting uh, well images is then a dilated version of your original image. Similarly, um, there is the erosion where you delete all parts of your foreground that can be attained by a structuring element that is in contact with the image background. And uh, I have a couple of beautiful images from Utkarsh, who is an undergraduate student um, and who has a blog. And there is his summary. So uh, on the left is a sample image. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, the result of a morphological opening, which er is defined as first erode and then dilate, dilate. So in the erosion step, what will, have, what will happen is that uh, these thin structures disappear. And moreover, um, these gaps here will become wider. So that would be the, <clears throat> the result of erosion. And afterwards, you can dilate, uh, dilate. The structures which are gone can, of course, not be brought back by dilation. But the gaps can again be made more narrow, giving you the result on the right-hand side. And then there is, so opening, uh, the name comes from uh, the opening of holes. The, uh, well, closing, similarly, you know, it closes gaps. <laughs> so uh, here you first dilate, which in this case, if I, if I dilate everything here, it will make these lines thicker, just as it will make everything a little bit bigger. And it will also close these gaps. So this is the intermediate result after dilation. And if you now erode this, then everything that has become broader becomes slimmer again. But the things which have disappeared, nobody can bring back. Okay, So this is, uh, you see here, the result of first a dilation, then an erosion. Then there is a concept of a morphological gradient where you compute both a dilation, dilation and an erosion and take the difference of the two. That's very useful for finding the outlines of shapes. And then there is a top hat filter, which is the source or the original image minus an opening. Or there's a black, black hat, which is the original filter minus a closed version. And you see that the top hat brings out the thin white structures or the thin foreground structures and the black hat brings out the 
those places where the background is very thin. This is useful for example, uh, such top hat filtering is useful for background removal. So let's say we have uh, a mass spectrometric signal and some uh, spectrum here, which is sitting on, on top of a uh, background that you want to get rid of, then uh, such top hat filtering is a good means of getting rid of all this background here by subtracting it. I also have an example in 3D here where um, this is an, a CT image of an aluminum foam with some solid inclusions. And if you just want to look at the inclusions, then you can use an opening, which will eat away on all the thin structures until they are gone. And then you inflate the remaining structures to come back to their original size. And you, you find just the inclusions shown on the right hand side. And this is from a book by um, two influential people in the field. So Joachim Oza teaches at the uh, Fachhochschule close by in Darmstadt. And Katja Schladitz is at the Fraunhofer Institute, also not far away in, in Kaiserslautern. So here are more slides from uh, Jean Serra. Um, I talked about dilation and erosion in terms of sets, so in terms of a pure binary image, but a gray value image can also be seen as a, a whole set of binary images. And this is the plot that I could also have used when talking about the maximally stable extremal regions. So you can take an arbitrary function like shown on the left and then threshold it at all conceivable levels and then you get out as many binary images as you have chosen thresholds and now you can apply let's say the same uh, erosion or dilation operation on all of those on all of those thresholded, uh, on all of those binary images, and you obtain a result that can be more compactly represented in terms of the maximum or the minimum filter. So if you take the maximum filter, the maximum within a given neighborhood, and the size of the neighborhood in this plot here is indicated by the length of the structuring element, then this is the same as uh, dilating all of these uh, stacked sets and then mapping back to a single function the result. Okay, so dilation is given by the result of a maximum filter and that is true in binary as well as in uh, real valued images and similarly erosion is given by the action of a minimum filter. And then uh, operations like here um, the morphological opening where you first erode and then delayed so you can represent this as the the a sequence of two nonlinear operators you first apply your minimum filter to the raw image and then you apply the maximum filter to the result and that gives you an opened version of your original image. Note again that these rank order filters are nonlinear in nature. Then I also already briefly showed uh, an image concerning the morphological gradient where you take an, a dilated minus an eroded version and as you saw in this picture here this finds you the outlines of objects and is the most convenient computation 
if for example you want to find if you want to compute the complete contour length of these objects here which was actually a concrete question we had uh, this is so-called spinoidal pattern it's very beautiful if you uh, <laughs> or I, I so i find uh, i can stare at this for a long time um, there is uh, so he studied here the mixing of uh, certain copolymers and you see that on the left hand side you have mostly black islands in a sea of white and on the right hand side you have white islands in a sea of black and in between is a uh, well a continuous transition and here you want to compute local properties like contour lengths and Euler numbers and curvatures and such things and so if you want to compute let's say the total contour length in uh, the smallest possible number of uh, lines then I think using the morphological gradient here is the easiest thing to do use a zoom in of a, of a small part here's an illustration of what the top hat filter does uh, the original minus an opened version and you see on the right hand side that there's you know there was some background or some baseline signal that, that has here been removed that is used sometimes to get rid of an inhomogeneous background as shown here on the left so um, you know the background is not black as it, as you would like it to have and then in the middle you see the result of a of a top hat filtering so another thing you can do with morphology is to measure size distributions of things that is often formulated not as a part of mathematical morphology but as a part of uh, stochastic geometry that I will come to next so my mini mini summary of mathematical morphology is that those are the techniques that everyone turns to when they want to denoise binary images in a in a very simple fashion so let's say you've computed for each pixel the probability of belonging to one or the other class and the result looks too noisy then you want to do something like a, you may want to do something like a closing to get rid of uh, tiny outliers in such a thresholded image as an alternative of course if your input was real valued then you can also use some kind of uh, smoothing filter edge preserving or not on the real valued image first but when, whenever you have binary images these morphological operators are really the the thing to use <laughs>